So from the hotel itself, you move from the hotel to the site, but you've, you've got to picture it. So there's 800 people who've gathered, all entrepreneurs, all for knowledge. They don't stay in a hotel. It's an actual boot camp, so they stay in actual tents. I, because I'm from here, um, don't need to do that. So I stay in the glamorous place where they have room service. So anyway, we travel from the hotel, myself and the other speakers, usually about 11 of us. We travel from the hotel to the site where the entrepreneurs are. They stay across this tent, massive tent we pitch in the middle of the Mara. And the tent only has generator power. So you have power to the generator. Three rules, no presentations, so you're not allowed to have any digital presentations, no screens, and speak from the heart. The generator's there purely for lighting because we run late into the evening. Around 11 o'clock at night in the Mara, it gets really, really cold. So we start in the morning, seven o'clock we start, and we'll go until 11 o'clock in the evening. None of these young people leave. So we're, we're moving from the hotel to the site where these entrepreneurs are gathered. And I'll never forget one of the mornings, we went past a herd of cattle. So try and, try and picture it. We're in, you know those buckies that they have on, on, on these uh, sort of safari places? So the side of the bucky's open, right? So we're in this bucky and we're driving and the road's really rugged. And there's a herd of cattle, must have been about 80 of them. So I said to the ranger, I said, this is really strange. Why is there a herd of cattle? He says, no, don't forget the Maasai people live here. So I go, okay. Um, and the herd of cattle belong to the Maasai? He says, yes. I said, and the little boy standing with these herd of cattle? And it was a little boy. It was about this high. And he had a stick in his hand, three times his height. And this little boy is just holding the stick. And he's wearing the red blanket, which the Maasai people are wont for wearing. So I said, and the little boy standing there? He says, no, the little boy is the shepherd. So I said, but why has he got a stick? He says, that's too to protect himself from the predators. He says, where we are, there's a lot of lions and hyenas. So I go, let me help me understand this. There's 80 herd of cattle. There's hyenas and lions here. And then he points, and this is when it became really real. He points over a little mountain pass, which must have been maybe 500 meters away. He says, there's a pride of lions who live just over that mountain pass. So I said, does the little boy know this? He said, yeah, sure, the whole village knows it. Why would they send the little boy to be a shepherd of 80 herds of cattle in the middle of the Mara with lions less than a kilometer away? And he says, that little boy has been trained to handle these elements before he was born. He basically has hundreds of years of evolution that he's been trained in and he's only eight years old. Then he says to me, with that stick he's got, the little boy is more powerful than I am with this rifle I'm holding. And he had a rifle in his hand. No ways. This is absolutely insane. He then says to me, don't forget, for the Maasai people, when a little boy passes over into manhood, and it happens at the age of 13, they're sent out into the wild, and they don't come back for three weeks. And when they come back for three weeks, the rule is they must have engaged a lion, or a hyena or some sort of dangerous predator and they must be able to prove it so often they will kill the animal to be able to prove that they've actually engaged it in the wild elements but that's not the point of my story he says to me what you must understand is because this little boy has been trained in how to handle himself in the wild it's not that he can actually fight the lion that makes him powerful what makes him powerful is that he believes he can he believes at the age of eight, with a stick that's maybe 1.2 meters high, he can fight the most powerful predator alive in the world today. He just believes he can. And I think perhaps that's something we have forgotten, especially in this country, that if we, if we believe we can, no matter what it is we want to do, nothing stops us. Nothing stops us.